the wood bluet. There's another really good eating mushroom. This is the time of year for mushrooms. Fall. This is my favorite time of year to be in the outdoors. These can be a little tricky to identify uh, mainly because there are other closely related species and there are uh, possibly several toxic lookalikes to this mushroom. Um, but if you pay attention to the characteristics, you should have no problems. And on the bluet, what I look for, they, they do vary greatly in color, um, but typically the ones I find uh, growing in uh, pine duff and such, pine needles, spruce needles, in this case it's a cedar tree they're growing around. Uh, they have a purple tinge to them. Usually the margin of the cap will have a darker purple coloration to it. Also, um, if you were to dig it up, there would be no uh, egg surrounding the base of the stem or anything which would rule out Amanita. Uh, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to cut it off right near the base because I already know this is a bluet. And I'm going to flip it over. And we can see, hopefully, in the video that uh, the underside is purple as well. Sort of a lilac purple coloration. And the gills are fairly close together. A lot of times with the bluets, you will find that the base of the stem is kind of bulbous. It's bigger around. And another thing I want to check for when I've got this flipped over is uh, any brown stringy like remnants that might be on this stem or even a brown coloration which might indicate that this mushroom once had a cortina which is a web kind of like a spider web like structure that runs from the uh, cap of the mushroom to the stem and it tears apart as the mushroom open up, opens up. But that would uh, indicate that it's possibly a court, a court or cortinaria species which uh, contains some toxic mushrooms so you have to watch out for that. But I don't see any signs of that. The stem has a, a whitish cast to it but it's sort of purple. Got that light purple color to it. If I cut it in a cross section, I can see that the gills, they run towards the cap and then they kind of dip upwards right when they reach the stem. They kind of have a little upward dip right there and that is uh, the shape of the gill structure which is another feature for this mushroom. You want to check out all these things. Now if I were to take this home and do a spore print on it, uh, the spore print would be a very light tan color, not brown. Uh, and that's the important thing because the poisonous Cordinarius, which uh, looks similar to this, uh, they have a rust brown spore print. So there's a 100% way to tell that the mushroom is not a bluet if it has a, a dark brown or a rust brown spore print. The spore print for a bluet should be very light tan color. Uh, in books they refer to it as buff. Um, to me it looks like uh, basically pale Caucasian flesh in the buff. A buff spore print. Not white, but very light in color. But I'm going to go ahead around this one little cedar tree here. 
right there is where that mushroom was they're growing all over around this cedar tree I'm just gonna crawl around under there and uh, pick out all the good ones and uh, see what I end up with here but uh, I'm not gonna be able to be crawling around in there with the camera so I'm just gonna set the camera down go in there and harvest up what I can and then I'll show you what I got when I finish here one thing I'll mention though when you do that I identified that one mushroom as a bluet but just because I identified that one mushroom as a bluet doesn't mean all these mushrooms under this tree are bluets I mean I can see there's there's different mushrooms I already see three or four different varieties of mushrooms here so I want to check each one of these and make sure that I'm actually picking a bluet rather than just haphazardly throwing them into my bag and getting a little too overexcited in my harvest. I'll be careful and harvest these up. They're all over under this cedar and uh, see what I get when I finish here. Well, there we go. You know, I just hopped out of my car and walked over here to this cedar tree and in about, I don't know, five, ten minutes, picked about a half pound or a pound of mushrooms. Nice and fresh, too. I got about 20 from under this uh, cedar. And I'll show you what I really like. I like to find these at the perfect, well, what I think is the perfect stage for eating, you know. And uh, when they're smaller, you know, when the caps are only maybe two inches across or so and they're really nice and hard like this one I mean this one's almost hard as a rock and it's got that big bulbous stem on the bottom that's kind of your classic wood bluer right there Lapista nuda the old Latin name was Clitocybe nuda but they changed it but uh, Clitocybes is another uh, uh, group of mushrooms that look very similar to this uh, so those are ones you need to watch out for and they basically vary by the slight differences in the color of the spore print and uh, differences in the color of the cap and such but if you uh, look up Lapista Nuda online uh, at a reputable website and research it or if you look in your identification guide or field guide you should be able to get enough information to sort this out from the poisonous mushrooms uh, with just a little bit of homework like I said you got to watch out for other clitocybes uh, you need to watch out for the um, cortinarius species of mushrooms and uh, there's another uh, group of mushrooms I don't recall the ah, tricholoma I believe tricholoma species and I think they might have hacked that group of mushrooms up recently with DNA studies but those three species all uh, those three genera of mushrooms all somewhat resemble the bluet but these are all really good eating here this one's getting just a little bit on the big side for me because the the gills have uh, the cap has opened up almost fully and it's starting to get just a bit soft these ones here have opened up a little more and uh, these are borderline I mean you can eat these these are fine as long as they're not bug infested but I just tend to like the smaller ones where the the flesh is still really firm and uh, not getting spongy whatsoever but I wanted to uh, show you these two just to give you an idea of the differences here's one that's really old it's obviously very soggy and all waterlogged but you can see the cap on this one looks much browner some some have a straight stem it's not bulbous and I can really see the purple coloration on the edges the margin of that stem or that cap I mean 
and also in the uh, gills themselves and the stem. I wanted to show you that real quick. This is the time of year for the wood bluet, and uh, you can find it growing anywhere there is compost, essentially. Um, what it really likes is deciduous leaves, but obviously, like right here, I found it growing in uh, cedar leaves, and it also grows in um, spruce needles because that's where I'm heading next because I'll probably find a bunch more bluets in there too and uh, hopefully some king bolites. So, there you go. One more mushroom to add to your arsenal. Yeah, as soon as I stepped into these spruces I found a bluet. Just one though, but I still got a nice big little stretch of woods to cover here. So. See that one's got the strong purple lilac coloration, even on the cap somewhat. I think the more sunlight they get, the browner they become. Um, that seems to be it because last year I found a whole bunch growing in an open field where somebody had piled a bunch of uh, oak leaves from their yard. And they were just growing out in the open field in those leaves in the full sun. But they were very brown in color. You couldn't make out any of the purple or lilac whatsoever. And it took me a, a lot of thinking and looking to be sure of what I had there. But they were certainly bluets. And, uh... I found, I think, over 200 of them, enough to fill a, a four foot by eight foot picnic table completely full. And they were all growing in a about a four by eight foot area of pile of leaves. So once you find them, you can get on them real good. I try to stick with the edibles that are abundant and fairly easy to identify. And this is definitely one of them. And it's an excellent mushroom to eat. Let's see, what is this? Aha! See now this is what you got to watch out for when you're hunting for bluets and other mushrooms too. Now you saw the bluets I showed you before, that little one with the bulbous base and the somewhat bell shaped cap. Now this one has the, the brownish coloration on the top like those bluets but I'm not seeing that purple margin. And if I flip it upside down, because this one is still young and not fully opened, hopefully you can make that out. There's that cottony, spiderweb-like veil that covers the gills when this mushroom is young. This is a Cortinarius species of mushroom. And uh, there are a great many quartz. Some are edible, some are poisonous. So I don't mess with any of them because they're hard to distinguish from one another. Um, I just make sure to know that if it has that cottony spiderweb-like veil or a rust brown spore print that it's most likely a core and there's a good possibility that it's either inedible or toxic. So, you know, keep an eye out uh, for the quartz when you're hunting bluets. Here's another variety of Cortinarius cort mushroom growing in the same place as those bluets. This one's still small, but the veil is almost unnoticeable. 
Now this one, the color looks far enough different from a bluet that, you know, I'm not gonna mistake that for a bluet. But you will find some that are purple, and those are the ones that you could accidentally put in your basket and end up poisoning yourself with. So just be very careful and look closely at those mushrooms. You know, this one, even though it's small, I can't really see that web-like veil that I was telling you about, but I do see some sort of brown streaks on the stem and that lets me know that it probably had the the cortina on it at one point but I'm thinking that's about it I've I've just about made it through this woods uh, there's one more uh, nice size blew it three or four inches See, this one is big, but it's still kind of firm, but it has bugs in it. The stem has a brown hole, and uh, there's a lot of worms in that stem. What, another thing you'll find, I should mention, with these bluets, there's small little... Uh, they almost look like a flea, but they're some type of little uh, fly or a gnat or something that gets in the gills of these mushrooms. And because these gills are so close together, it can be a bit tricky getting them out. Sometimes, uh, even though I hate to do it, I'll end up uh, washing these mushrooms or at least soaking them for a bit to get the bugs to come up out of there. Somebody else has been through here though. Here's one that's been knocked over.